Have you ever wondered why Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve apostles, chose to betray Jesus Christ, his trusted friend and teacher? The tale of Judas Iscariot is shrouded in mystery and intrigue. His character, complex and multifaceted, has been a subject of debate for centuries. His actions, puzzling and significant, played a crucial role in one of the most pivotal moments in history. So let's embark on a journey together, delving deep into the life and death of this enigmatic figure. Join us as we unravel the life and death of Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot is often known as the Betrayer. But who was he before he gained this infamous title? Envision a man not much different from the rest of us. Judas Iscariot hailed from a town called Carioth, hence his surname Iscariot. He was just like any other man of his time, but fate had a different plan for him. Judas was one of the twelve apostles, handpicked by Jesus himself, but he wasn't just an ordinary apostle. He was entrusted with an important role, the treasurer. He held the common purse managing the resources for the group, a position of trust indeed. His relationship with Jesus was no less significant. He was, after all, one of the chosen twelve, an inner circle of followers who were privy to Jesus' teachings and miracles. He witnessed the feeding of the five thousand, the calming of the storm, and the many healings that Jesus performed. He was there, experiencing it all firsthand. Judas was also part of a brotherhood, a fraternity of apostles. He walked with them, ate with them, shared stories and experiences with them. They were comrades, united by their shared allegiance to Jesus. But despite this closeness, despite the trust and camaraderie, there was a growing restlessness within Judas. A seed of discontent had been planted. The Gospels tell us that he was avaricious, often dipping into the common purse for his own use. But was it just greed that led him astray, or was there more to the story? Judas's relationship with Jesus and the other apostles was complex, to say the least. He was part of the inner circle, yet he was also the outsider, the one who would eventually betray them all. His actions, his choices, they were his own. And they would lead him down a path of infamy, forever etching his name in the annals of history as the betrayer. Despite his closeness to Jesus, Judas chose a path that would forever change the course of history. A deal was struck, 30 pieces of silver in exchange for the life of Jesus. But what drove Judas to this extreme? Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve apostles, a follower and friend of Jesus, made a choice that would echo through the annals of history. He chose betrayal over loyalty, silver over salvation. But why? What could have possibly led him down this dark path? There are theories, of course. Some suggest it was greed, the allure of 30 pieces of silver proving too tempting for a man of modest means. Others posit that it was disillusionment, that Judas had grown frustrated with the peaceful path Jesus was walking and sought a more militant Messiah. Yet the Bible indicates a more sinister influence. The Gospel of Luke states that Satan entered Judas, leading him to the chief priests and officers to discuss a plan to betray Jesus. Was Judas merely a pawn in a celestial chess game, a vessel for the devil's work? Or was there a part of him that willingly embraced the darkness? Let's delve a bit deeper into the significance of the 30 pieces of silver. This was not a random amount. In the book of Exodus, it's the price of a slave, the value of a human life in the eyes of society. Judas traded the life of Jesus, a man he had followed and loved, for the price of a common slave. The gravity of this transaction is staggering. The silver coins were not just a symbol of Judas's betrayal, but also a stark reminder of the value we place on human lives. It asks us to reflect on the worth of a life and the devastating consequences of placing material wealth above moral integrity. In the end, Judas's betrayal was more than a personal failing. It was a cosmic event, a clash of divine and diabolical forces. A deal was struck, a life was traded, and a destiny was sealed. It was a deal that sealed not only Jesus' fate, but also Judas's own. The Last Supper, a meal shared among friends, but also the stage for a chilling declaration. Within the intimate confines of that upper room, the air was thick with camaraderie and anticipation. Yet an undercurrent of unease was undeniable, for Jesus, the man they called Master, had something to share. Imagine the scene. They were breaking bread, sipping wine, their faces lit by the soft glow of candlelight. Then Jesus, with a serene yet somber expression, dropped a bombshell. Verily I say unto you, one of you will betray me. The disciples stared at him, their hearts pounding, their minds whirling. Who could it be? Each man looked at the other, suspicion and confusion etched on their faces. The question hung in the air, 
A dark cloud casting a shadow over the meal, it was Peter, the ever-impulsive one, who dared to ask, Lord, who is it? Jesus, his gaze steady, replied, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Then it was Judas, the man who would go down in history as the quintessential traitor who dared to speak. Master, is it I? He asked, his voice perhaps shaky, his hands perhaps cold. Jesus looked at him, a sad knowingness in his eyes, and replied, Thou hast said. And so the stage was set, the bread was broken, the wine was poured, and the betrayal was announced. It was a poignant moment, a turning point in the narrative that would lead to the crucifixion of Jesus and the downfall of Judas. The Last Supper was not just about breaking bread, it was a revelation, a confrontation, and a prophecy. It was the scene of a friend's betrayal and a master's acceptance of his impending fate. With a kiss, the betrayal was complete, setting in motion a series of events that would lead to Judas's tragic end. The betrayal had been done, but what happened to Judas after he handed Jesus over? As dawn broke over Jerusalem, Judas Iscariot, the man who had just betrayed his teacher, his friend, his Messiah, for 30 pieces of silver, was drowning in a sea of remorse and guilt. The stark reality of his actions had set in, the enormity of his betrayal looming over him like a dark cloud. His heart was heavy, his conscience gnawed at him, and his soul was in turmoil. In his desperation, Judas attempted to undo his actions. He went back to the chief priests and elders, the very men he had conspired with, carrying with him the thirty pieces of silver. His guilt was so overpowering he wished to return the blood money, hoping perhaps to alleviate the weight of his actions. But alas, the chief priests and elders were unmoved by his remorse. They dismissed his guilt with a cold indifference, stating that his betrayal and the consequences thereof were his to bear alone. The thirty pieces of silver, the price of his betrayal, were cast back at him, a stark reminder of the irreversible path he had chosen. Judas was left alone, his guilt and remorse his only companions. The thirty pieces of silver, once a symbol of his greed, now served as a bitter reminder of his treachery. His heart was filled with regret, but there was no turning back. The deed was done, the betrayal complete. In his darkest hour, Judas realized the full magnitude of his actions. He had betrayed not just a man, but the Son of God. His guilt was insurmountable, his remorse unending. He was trapped in a vortex of regret with no hope of redemption. His guilt was a relentless tormentor, a constant reminder of his unforgivable sin. Overwhelmed with guilt, Judas was unable to find solace, leading him down a dark path. His story serves as a potent reminder of the devastating consequences of betrayal and the destructive power of guilt. It is a tale of remorse, of regret, and ultimately, of despair. Haunted by his actions, Judas met a gruesome end, but how did his story conclude? Let's delve into the chilling details. Overcome by guilt, Judas found himself unable to bear the weight of his actions. He had betrayed his teacher, his friend, for 30 pieces of silver, a paltry sum for a man's life. The remorse was too much. Judas tried to return the money to the chief priests and elders, but they refused to take it back, saying, What is that to us? That's your responsibility. Left with a blood price he could not spend and a guilt he could not bear, Judas took a drastic step. He went to a desolate place, a field that would later be known as the Field of Blood. There he hung himself a grim testament to his regret and despair. His life ended in a lonely field, a tragic end for a man who had walked with the Son of God. This graphic demise of Judas is not just a historical event, but also a moral lesson. It serves as a warning about the consequences of betrayal and the heavy toll of guilt. Judas's death is a stark reminder of the price of disloyalty and the destructive power of remorse. However, interpretations of his death vary among scholars. Some view Judas as a tragic figure driven to his end by guilt and regret. Others see him as a necessary instrument in the fulfillment of a divine plan. Regardless of the interpretation, Judas's death remains one of the most potent symbols in biblical literature. In death, Judas became a symbol of betrayal and remorse, a haunting figure forever remembered for his tragic end. His story serves as a stark reminder of the destructive power of guilt and the severe consequences of betrayal. It's a tale that echoes through the ages, a chilling account of one man's fall from grace, a tale of regret, redemption, and a tragic end. A tale that, no matter how many times it's told, never loses its power to captivate and caution. Judas Iscariot, a man whose name has become synonymous with betrayal. But what can we learn from his story? 
Let's delve into the lessons nestled within this tale, one that has been retold for over 2,000 years. At the heart of Judas's story, we find the theme of betrayal. It's a stark reminder that our actions towards others, especially those we call friends, can have devastating consequences. Betrayal, as seen in Judas's act, is not just a personal affront, but can ripple out, impacting communities, nations, even the course of history. But Judas's story isn't just about betrayal, it's also about guilt. After his act of treachery, Judas was consumed by remorse. His guilt was so overwhelming it led him down a path of self-destruction. It teaches us that guilt, when left unchecked, can be a destructive force. It's crucial to face our guilt, to seek forgiveness, and to make amends where possible. Lastly, we must reflect on the theme of redemption. Judas's tragic end might make us question, is there redemption for such a grave act? The answer isn't straightforward. It's a subject of theological debates and interpretations vary, but it does provoke us to ponder on the extent of forgiveness and the possibility of redemption. Judas's story serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of our actions and the power of remorse. It implores us to consider the weight of betrayal, the torment of guilt, and the elusive quest for redemption. We've journeyed through the life and death of Judas Iscariot, a story that continues to captivate and challenge us. From a man behind the infamy, a deal with the devil, to the Last Supper and the aftermath of betrayal, culminating in his tragic end. This tale probes us to ponder on its profound implications. If you found this video enlightening, please give us a thumbs up and share. Join our family and subscribe to our channel. May God bless you in all your endeavors. Thank you so much for watching.